kind of kind of a funny little twist there at the end of that that music. Anyway, hey everybody, good to see you. Uh, good to be back here after being away for a couple of weeks, and thank you for your patience and allowing us to take a break when we need to from time to time. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. We have Maria Hornbacher on, um, and she's going to be talking. Wow, we're going to have a conversation about gender bias and AA, or maybe just in recovery circles at large. Um, let me say hello to the people who are out there. Uh, Jay, Monty, good to see you. Fred, Dale, John, Jennifer, good to see you. And Jeff, wonderful to have you here. So at any rate, um, let's bring Mary out and say hello real quick. Mary, nice to Hi. have you. Hey, John, how are you? I am good. I missed you uh, the last couple of weeks. I always love uh, our conversations um, before and after these episodes, and I just value your friendship so much and enjoy doing these live streams with you. So it's good Likewise. to be back. I think I needed the break, but it's good yeah. to be back. It's always good to take a break. And was that new intro music? Because the end had like a whip sound. <laughs> yeah. What was yeah, it was new, and it's kind of a weird um, thing at the end. So it was kind yeah. of a Western Western thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a hard time with that music. So anyway, thank you for inviting Maria. I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation about gender bias uh, in AA. Um, imagine there would even be a, a thing, <laughs> but, yep. but it could, could be. Well, you for know, those I of heard, you, go go ahead. Ahead. I'm sorry, Maria. I, I heard uh, Maria uh, giving this topic at, on a Hazelton uh, interview, oh. gender bias and sexism in AA. And it was fascinating to me and the way mm -hmm. that she's able to language the things, the perspectives is a, okay. a wonderful thing. So I'm really excited that she's here today. Okay, I am. And I think everybody else is. Uh, for anyone who might not know Maria, she is a award-winning journalist. She, She's the author of many books. She's a person in recovery. And one, one the book that she wrote that a lot of us are familiar with and that was a really big influence on me early on was Waiting, A Non-Believer's Higher Power, which really was the first book that I read that helped me understand the 12-step process uh, through a way that was more gentle, friendly, accessible, you know, yeah, understandable, yeah. relatable. So um, thank you, Maria, for that. Let's bring her out. We're talking about her. We may as well have talk with her. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, nice to see you all. Hello. Alex, the cat, has decided he's joining us and he's going to be talkative now. So okay, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Like cat commentary. It's what we got going on. That's totally um, fine. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. So there's actually a problem with gender bias in AA? <laughs> I believe there would be a little bit of a problem with gender bias. Kind of not just in AA or in, there goes Alex. Um, yeah. Not just in AA, but kind of like, that's the, that's actually a great, it's a great springboard because it's not, it's not just AA. It's not just the recovery community. What I think I've been thinking about a lot lately is, is the role that gender plays in all of our lives. And I think in the recovery community, it's very convenient when we can say, well, that's an outside issue. Uh, and it's an outside issue as soon as it implicates us, is my experience, is that like as soon as I'm, I'm pinpointed, I'm like, wow, that's certainly an outside <laughs> issue suddenly, you know what I mean? But the fact is that like the stuff that we do in our regular lives, we walk into the meetings and, and into the communities carrying that with us like we're like dragging it around like student loans or like bag you know what i mean like yeah. that's our baggage we drag it with us and the stuff we bring about gender as the stuff like the stuff we bring about class and race and and regionalism we don't always intend it we are often unaware of what we're bringing to bear on our perceptions of other people and our perceptions of ourselves and so that's kind of what i've been thinking about yeah i know uh and that's what i've been thinking about is the ways in which those biases not just um, against or or for, uh, they are also informing who we are and who we think we are ourselves and how we think we get to live in the world and how we get to behave. And so I'll bring up, I mean, a couple of examples that kind of have been on my mind lately. One, not too long ago, I was I was talking to a friend of mine. He's relatively, he's relatively newish. I mean, in sobriety, a couple of years and he's real active. He's, um, He's generous with his time. He's generous with his sponsorship. He's generous with his availability. And he contacted me after a meeting mortified that the woman in his meeting one day had been really upset because a bunch of men were having a little bit of fun with some super appalling jokes mm -hmm. uh, about women and about gender, like specifically um, really highly sexualized jokes. And he's like, we were just kidding. And I'm like, so just being an asshole doesn't get funny for everybody like not everybody thinks it's funny to be explicitly offensive 
about that person's identity group. So like, he's like, but we were just kidding. And I'm like, that's immaterial to the one woman in your rural area who has to go get in her car alone after a bunch of men have been making really hostile jokes about women. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, we never would have. I'm like, but you apparently would have. Like, no, you might not have followed her to, to her car, but you made her profoundly uncomfortable in a meeting. So how is that? Um, how is that reflective of the program's intentions? You know what I mean? Like, how is that? Um, and so that's the thing is that it's an outside issue as soon as somebody's implicated. Right. So like he is unoffended because that assumption is that his assumption, the baseline is that we all have to kind of revert to all the white men in the room have to be comfortable. If we all, for example, if Mary and I start talking about menopause and all the men in the room are like, so we're dealing with periods and vaginas right now, and suddenly we all get super blushy. And I'm like, but actually what's offensive about that? I don't know how to tell you this, but it happens to the best of us. Um, <laughs> but, but like that suddenly all the men in the room are like, oh, they can't talk about that here. I'm like, you know what? I actually can talk about what the fuck ever I want. You can. You can too. You know what I mean? Like, and if you want to make, um, if you want to make hostile, offensive jokes about an identity group, you get to do that. You will also have the response that you anticipate or fail to anticipate, right? Like if the bunch, you know, if a bunch of dudes in here are like, oh, awkward menopause, I can assume they may be like, hey, that was offensive. Okay, that's cool. I can assume that consequence will be that someone will be uncomfortable. I may hear about it. Similarly, like, that's the thing is, yes, we get to be who we are. Yes, we get to say what we want. But the baseline assumption that I have to make all the men in the room comfortable is exhausting. Um, and, and the failure of other identity groups to assume they have to make me comfortable is also exhausting. You know what I mean? So like, I think the gender bias that we bring with us and the sexism, I mean, sexism is a super blunt term, I think. So I prefer, mm. I do prefer gender bias because, you know, I bring my biases in too. I bring in my experience as a female bodied person who identifies as a woman in the world with me everywhere I go. And it makes me spiky. You know, it doesn't make everybody spiky. It doesn't make every woman spiky, but that's what it does to me. And so my predisposition in a room full of men is not to be shy and unassuming to sort of soften my edges to make the men comfortable. It's to be spiky, to make myself comfortable because it does make me comfortable to feel like I've got a little barbed wire around myself. Here's a second example. Recently, um, I went to uh, an in-person meeting. I hadn't been there. Uh, I'd never been there before. I walk in as it often is. I walk in, it's a room full of men. They stare at me. I stare at them. I say, is this a men's mm -hmm. meeting? They say no. And someone to be nice, I mean, genuinely to be nice says, it's great to have some feminine energy in here. I'm like, mm. I may not have actually brought any with me, um, I'm, <laughs> but but I'm happy to sit here in lipstick if that helps you in some way. Um, you know, and so like, that's the thing is that the gender, that the gender bias that informs us isn't even always negative, right? Like he wasn't trying to be unkind. He was actually trying to make me feel welcomed by really clearly pointing out my gender, which I was already conscious of, right? Like, and I'm like, I'm happy to be here as an alcoholic among, a man among men, as they say. Um, and so like part of the deal is that everywhere, um, every meeting we go to, we're bringing in all our perceptions, kind, unkind, mean, friendly, judgmental, not judgmental, generous, not generous. We bring those with us. It's the bias that doesn't make it good or bad. It makes it a fact though. Like it influences our interactions. And so is it an issue in AA? Yeah. The same as it's an issue in a gas station. When I walk into a gas station, I'm the only woman there, right? Like that's an issue only if I am, um, you know, I'm more aware of it than, than probably a man is right. Like a man walking into a gas station doesn't go, God, am I going to be the only man in here? Mm -hmm. But as a woman who travels full time, I'm aware of it everywhere I go. I can't walk into a gas station. I can't walk into a grocery store. That's OK. I'm used to it. But also, I think the the default and the simple fact that there are numerically more men in AA than That's there the are thing. women by That's a the long thing. measure. Right. Yes. There's a lot more men. And the assumption that because there are fewer women, we should be comfortable with male interactions. Uh, OK. I, I can be or I can not, but I'm not going to default to men's comfort. Well, Mario, um, that's exactly what I was thinking that was unique about AA and, and in regard to other um, recovery groups or any group in society is that 
I've talked to a lot of women over the years and their first AA meeting, uh, there might, they might be the only woman in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they, they immediately don't have that a level of comfort, I guess. And sometimes the men are very nice and welcoming and, and warm and friendly. Um, sometimes not. Uh, but I just think, I just think it's that the, the numbers of men outnumbering women is a problem. And also, um, not to bash it, but the program itself and the way it was written by guys in the 1930s. Very patriarchal. And, yeah. Right. And they're being real true believers about that. Mm -hmm. I think that adds to it as well. My opinion. I want to kind of jump on that just briefly because it's not a matter of warm and welcoming. This was an interesting experience. Again, this comes to our our perception of what men are like, what women are like, what non-binary people, what trans people, like our perceptions of what those people other than ourselves, right? Those people want or need. I had that same meeting where everybody's like, glad to have some feminine energy. Well, another woman walked in about 10 minutes later and it's still all men and then me and her. And she looked at me real warily. And I'm like, hmm. we're good. I'm not going to bug you. I'm not going to come over and like smother you with my cuddly woman stuff. You know what I mean? Like I didn't do that to her because I should actually see, I'm like, that's a girl I understand. Right. When she spoke, I've also been around a while. Right. Like, so I can read somebody coming into the room and being like, this is a person who does want talk. This is a person who doesn't want talk. Well, this poor young woman <clears throat> um, sat down and during the talking part, during the sharing part, said she was a few days sober, like two or three days sober. And then, of course, every dude in there goes into his thing about how AA is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to him and blah, 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 blah. And how great it is that she's back. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure every dude in here has got like 19 days sober. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so that's cool. But eventually when it was my turn, I said, I will tell you, sometimes coming back into the rooms is hard, not because getting sober is hard, but because the rooms can be hard. Um, and nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that AA is imperfect. Like mm -hmm. it's human. Right. And I met, I went up to her afterwards and I was like, you do not ever have to use this, but here is my phone number. Mm. And I watched her try and walk the gauntlet of men out the door because wow, were they warm and welcoming. They were glad handing. They were putting their hand on her shoulder. I'm like, did anybody ask her if she wanted right. anybody to touch her? No. Like, I don't see dudes doing that to other dudes. They're like, hey, man, hell, thanks. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like I needed to stop and, like, address it. But I was glad to hear from her two nights later on New Year's Eve at 12 o'clock when she had gone to a dance and was hiding in the bathroom wow. because it was all men. And she's like, I can't get out of here. And I'm like, I'm going to send you an Uber. You know what I mean? So the woman could leave an AA event safely Wow! because she was a woman, right? And two days later, she texts me. She's like, I'm still sober. I just want to thank you for not being all bubbly and cheerful. Hmm. And that was the thing. It was like, it was, I think a lot of people, men, women, whatever, would assume that a new woman in the program would need a lot of cuddling and bubbling and whatever. And all these guys who were bubbly and cheerful really kind of made her feel like she was being, if not bothered she was her space was for sure invaded and i was like listen call me if you want to call me call me drunk sober i don't care call me if you need a ride you know i guess i was like wow that's um you know so it goes from unwanted attention and unwanted warmth and friendliness all the way to kind of predation the woman can't leave a meeting Damn. you know and so like that's so ordinary and that's it the is. thing is that, again it's not just a a that's the world like I can't tell you how many women have my phone number so I can send them an Uber, mm -hmm. not just for AA, but because that's the world, right? Like, so we're aware that that's the world. I do think that it would behoove male bodied people in the program to be aware that your glad handing is actually, um, um, is participating in a larger world where the world thinks it can touch me. Like that's the world. It's not just AA. It's a world where I'm five feet tall and a hundred pounds soaking wet. Every dude who meets me thinks it's fun to pick me up. That ends mm. well for no one. That's I, I believe that. <laughs> so like, that's the thing. Is it like the participation in a larger cultural problem? It's AA is not, AA isn't special. It's not particularly sexist. There are ways in which it's sexism is more dangerous because sometimes when we come in male, female, otherwise we're fragile sometimes, yeah. right? We're prickly. Yeah. We're very vulnerable when we come in. We're vulnerable. 
And that's, that's why it. I always tell newcomers to come to the women's meeting because there's less of that to worry about. There's less of adjusting. I prefer women's meetings because I don't have to adjust. I don't edit. Right. I don't edit. The communication is so much easier. There's so many levels that are not there when it's a women's meeting that are there when it's a co-ed meeting. I like them both. But if I only had one to go to, I would pick the women's meeting for that reason. And then we don't ever have to worry about, at least I have not in a women's meeting worried about 13th stepping. Yeah. And um, I'm super, I'm super intrigued by a couple of comments um, about oppositional defiance and groups of female friends who arrive at meetings together. And let me find out if I even want to be here. Um, and I'm not sure bro, me either. bro. I think, you know, it's intriguing that uh, again, like the, the feeling that women talking about the lack of safety that we experience in the world, if you don't even want to hear that, I, I can assure you, you're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I mean, if you don't want to be aware of the experience of women, the reason women in groups or even alone come in with an oppositional defiance is because we aren't safe in the world or in meetings. So, like, if that's not interesting oh, to you, interesting. Cool then maybe that's not like the conversation that you need to hear. But if you are a part of a program that is trying to open the door to people getting sober, making those rooms at least non, um, <clears throat> non hostile to women seems like a start. Like this is shocking, mm -hmm. like shocking yeah. to see. And, yeah. I think a lot of men hear women talking about it and they immediately go to the male bashing phrase. And that's not what we're talking about. We're just having a conversation about gender bias in AA. And, you know, it's the only way to educate and to learn and to participate is to have a conversation. And I really appreciate you for this conversation because it's not <laughs> done very yeah. often. And it's when I hear this, though, I feel embarrassed for my male colleagues, my <laughs> fellow male sometimes. I mean, I, I do. I mean, I, I and I have to tell you, I've seen this. I, I actually, um, was at a meeting. I didn't say anything, and I should have. Um, there's. I have two examples of one where I did the good thing, and one where I didn't. Um, this guy was just touching this woman's leg as he, as he was talking to her, and it was. And I could tell she was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, think, I didn't say anything. Yeah, I think, and that's the that's part of the issue. I am super intrigued by this hostility. If you don't have pronouns, honey, you're not participating in the English language. I don't know how to tell you that, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, like, that's going to be problematic for you. We'll have to refer to you as it, which is also a pronoun. Um, <laughs> like, this is the thing, is that, like, the, the antagonistic tone of the comments is, uh, is troubling. I mean, because, like, I... I I find it really, I find oh, it really man. troubling that even talking about an entire class of people who are not regularly comfortable in our meetings, which we hold so that other people can get sober safely and healthily so that we can support them as a community. The idea that we can't even talk about whether a great number of those people are safe and comfortable in the meetings. Like, if we can't talk about that, then we shouldn't have AA. No. Like, the very small percentage of us who even get sober in AA, if we are all, all going to narrow that down to only these people get to um, participate. Yeah. That's what I That's what I want to talk about, that we all get in our tribes, and we don't want anyone that triggers us from an outside tribe, so we tend right. to other people. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Women have always huddled together for safety. I, I totally get right. that. We're always I mean, raised a in a world where we're uh, reacting to men's opinions and actions. Yeah. That's how I was raised as a woman. But we're, and I we're think just guarding, like coming in with that sort of, and thank you, Monty, for, guard, the, uh, yes. for the clarification. I agree with you that, you know, the kind of the 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 bombard, the, the newcomer business is, is un- um, not every newcomer likes that. I think some no. newcomers may really warm to being welcomed in that way. I'm not that person. Like no. I'm very much as you, as you say, Monty, like I'm, I'm a kind of person who's like, I'll just sit tight until I'm, I'm cool if I want to be here. So thank you so much for clarifying that. I just like, it's, um, it's, it's such an intriguing, um, it's such an intriguing thing because for a long time, people really sort of had this idea that 
there was this universality, like that gender didn't matter, that race didn't matter, like none of these things mattered in AA because the vast majority of the people there were white men. And so like they were comfortable and that was universal. And I'm like, well, that's that's an old school sort of perception of what's going on in the world. And now that we are talking more, I think about these identity groups, which are important to a point, it doesn't mean it supersedes the it doesn't mean it supersedes the core message of sobriety or how we can do it. But I feel like slamming doors in people's faces, whether intentionally or unintentionally, uh, is absolutely the opposite of our purpose. Like that is not what we're here for. We're not here to keep people out. You know, we're here to let people in and to be. Um, you know, if I went after every person who said something stupid in a meeting, I wouldn't go to meetings, right? Like, and if everybody who didn't like me got to keep me out, well, we'd all be in deep shit, right? Like we mm -hmm. all are bothering somebody. That's um, why we say principles over personalities. Right, right, so right. For me, the expectation is the principles of tolerance and acceptance and inclusion and diversity and love and service are the principles of AA that should be right. for, in my opinion, the higher goal. And I agree. And that too, I mean, that's unity. That's not universal. That's unity. That's you right. know what I mean? And so like that, that question of like creating unity in a diverse world, it's a hell of a task, right? Like, I mean, it's a tall order, but we can't start with, well, unity for these people, the rest of you need to get comfortable with how we are. Yeah. You know, and Agreed. that's, that's, you know, that's, that will make, the very small identity group that feels comfortable, comfortable, and they will have unity and good mm -hmm. on them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's great. But the rest of us who are not necessarily comfortable or even willing to participate. I mean, the reason there are fewer women in AA isn't because actually there are fewer women alcoholics. It is because of AA. Right. I, I, I believe that. I believe that from just the women that I've, I've spoken to over the years in this podcast, um, a lot of it has to do with the, the literature, the language, the culture, um, it, right. there, there's a real love for uh, the history and how AA came about within the AA community. And it, I, I've learned that um, it can be dangerous to worship your ancestors and um, try to replicate what they did, you know, like right, they were so right, wonderful, right. you know, and to a certain extent that happens, I think, uh, in, in yeah. that culture. And I think, you know, the, the fact is that we're, I mean, even just the existence of this podcast, at some point there was a critical mass of people who were like, uh, you know, we can't necessarily all be comfortable with the God talk, right? right. In the meetings, right. we're going right. to create rooms where we are comfortable talking about it without that, right? Like mm -hmm. we're just going to create a space for people who are, whether or not we agree with each other on the fundamentals, we are more comfortable perhaps talking about sobriety and recovery without the God language why shouldn't we also start i mean that's a change like aa is 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 very very difficult to change and as you say i think it's dangerous to worship worship one's ancestors but like there's i can't see why other small shifts can't also be made like if we can shift something as deeply religious as the language of aa to a beyond belief format for mm -hmm. the millions of us who find that more accessible more available find sobriety within that that's an open door Right. That's a door opening for the millions of people who don't feel comfortable with the religiosity. <clears throat> Wouldn't it also make sense to open the door for the people who are like, I find the sexism and the gender bias in these rooms super problematic. Can we maybe not have that? But that does take conversation. Like it does take acknowledging that, um, you know, oh, interesting point, Jennifer. I never hear love, tolerance and diversity. I love that. Like that's sort of like, that is so critical to, it isn't just love and tolerance. Like if I tolerate you, that's actually kind of insulting. You know what mm. I mean? Like if I'm yeah. tolerating your yeah. difference from my norm, woo ish, right? Like what, maybe you're tolerating me right now, for sure. A couple of you are, if, <laughs> at best. but the fact is I've been tolerating those folks a long time too. Yeah. Like, Tolerance is the bare minimum. Love, acceptance. Um, I'm going to answer that question in a second, uh, Missy, about gender bias in the steps. Super good question. I think, you know, if, if we can diversify what we bring to the meetings, it, we're not, you know, nobody asked us to go to meetings because we had our shit together. Like nobody 
said, you know what? Y'all are so together. Go and have a meeting where you talk about what drunks you are. You know what I mean? Like, can we acknowledge that we were flawed to begin with? Can we acknowledge that we're flawed people trying to be better people together? You know what I mean? Like, and that doesn't mean I have to like what you believe, but I do have to feel safe in a room with you. Like, can we have a baseline there? Like a baseline of we're going to be respectful and let each other be who we are. Doesn't mean we have to like you, but we do have to at least tolerate and accept and welcome, I hope, the diversity. I want to say um, to this question about any gender bias in the steps, I like the we-ness of the steps because it is inclusive as a pronoun, as pronouns go. <laughs> um, so like since we're you know going to include our pronouns in today's conversation, <laughs> and not eliminate any other parts of speech either. So, I mean, don't fuck with English teachers on pronouns, please. No. <laughs> like, like, like this. Mm. So the, the gender bias in the steps, I can't say that I do because I, I believe the we of it makes it accessible to anyone who can find the principle beneath the step. I mean, I have a lot of problems with the steps, most of which are linguistic, right? And syntactical. But the actuality is that each step has a couple or can have a couple of principles beneath it. Like, and the principles of the program, nobody has to agree on the steps. We are here to practice these principles yes. in all our affairs, including yes. our meetings, right? Including our classrooms, our conversations, our podcasts, our relationships. We're here to practice these principles. And beneath those steps, even if I hate the language of the step, even if I hate the God stuff, even if I hate this, that, or the other thing, the principles beneath the steps, justice, service, equity, humility, peacefulness, love, you know, I mean, those principles, I can get behind every single one. Mm -hmm. And even if I am making up which principle is attached to which step, I can for sure work a step. If all I do is strip away everything and go, I'm going to get better at honesty. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get better at humility. I'm going to get better at compassion. I'm going to get better at justice, right? Like those principles allow me access to the steps, even when I'm going through a period where I dislike a step for whatever reason, I've got something, you know, I've got my undies in a bunch about a step for whatever reason, which I do periodically, mm -hmm. but like the gender bias within those, I, I if there is gender bias and I'm, there probably is, if there is, I'm able to strip it away as I'm able to sometimes strip away the religiosity of yeah. the language and get to the core. And it still helps me take another step up the ladder. Right. You know what I mean? Like in that, in that process toward uh, fuller recovery. So I think, I think that's a super good question, but in, in, um, in the steps, in the literature, I'm able to strip that away because I'm willing to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm willing to make some bends in that language, but if I took it as literal truth, like if I thought, if I thought the big book in the language of it was inspired and and in con incontestable, I'd feel stuck, right? I do feel mm -hmm. stuck sometimes in the meetings with the cultural baggage we're all bringing mm -hmm. in. That means I just have to chip it away, chip away at it. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not going to chip away at the steps the way they were written. I can practice them to the best of my ability my way. Um, that's not so true in a social context like a meeting. Well, what I've learned from you, Maria and Josie and others is that I can change a word if I don't like it. And right. um, then over the years, I have evolved to understand that those steps as written are just a description of an experience that those people had told from their perspective. But the experience that they had is a human experience that, that all human beings will have when they, when, they, when they reach this point where they realize they need to make a change in their life. And the process that we go through th is described in those steps, but it's described in the language of those people. But anyway, we don't have to use their language. We can use our own. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's what, that's what we've been doing since we that's left right. LAA. Or right. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the language of it is the language has to be flexible. I also feel like if we can make the language flexible for ourselves, as Josie has, has indeed taught us, um, <clears throat> not only can we make the language flexible, my comprehension, I mean, like the idea that any of us is going to have a common experience of sobriety or yeah. recovery or anything else, like that idea of universality is just a fallacy. Like I hate to tell us all, but like consciousness makes us all deeply subjective. None of us has the same experience as anybody else. My absolutes are not anybody else's absolutes, right? Like the experience of this conversation I'm having is totally different than the one anybody else is having. Sure. And so recognizing 
that is an element of humility. Like that's a limitation of consciousness. I cannot think in your head, right? You know what I mean? Like, right, mm -hmm. exactly. The big book is absolutely like it, everybody but Bill, right? Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like the, everybody, everybody has the option of creating a sobriety and a recovery that, that works for them. As I kind of going back to what I said at the beginning, if you want to go into a meeting with your sobriety and it conflicts with somebody else's sobriety, we're all in the sandbox, right? Like, you know, I mean, like we do, I believe it is an ethical decision to make the room a calm, like commodious, to make it available, to make it capacious, make it, make it a place that any of us can be. Um, the language of the the language of the literature doesn't do that. That's why we're writing new literature. That's why we're having conversations all the time. The literature and the and the sort of the theory I feel has changed is is changing is evolving. The stuff we drag in with us as little mammals, you know, continues to be super problematic, and we continue to really cling to it in some ways. And um, and so I feel like it's it's beholden upon me to find ways like chinks and cracks in the wall where I can start like worrying, can we do this a little differently? Can we make this more available to people? Can we make it more honest, but also more, um, more accessible? I mean, that continues to be my, my goal as a person in recovery is to make what I get to have in these rooms available to other people because it isn't necessarily visible. When that woman walks into a meeting and I'm the only woman and I'm a middle-aged white lady, you know, she's going, oh God, you know, she's probably going to come over and give me a hug. You know what I mean? Like I would have turned tail and run as a new person in AA. And so I want like visibly, you know, we're not representative. There's a group of white people right here. Like, and there may be people of color in the, in the audience, but we are not visually representative right. of the world that we live in. We could at least make a stab at making the rooms accessible and safer to people who do not identify as white men. That's great. You you were uh, mentioning earlier in the conversation that um, people will say that something's an outside issue, and uh, unfortunately, um, what happens on the outside affects us on the inside and affects our recovery and everything. And over the last several years, maybe last decade, maybe I don't know how long, but the politics in this country has just gotten really, really angry, and I see it impacting how people just treat one another. Mm -hmm. it, there was a time in my memory where we would be interested in learning about someone, at least I am. <laughs> and, and, but anyway, I, I'll just tell you a story. So the company I work for, it's a, very, it's a very good company, and they want to be inclusive, and they want to recognize groups that have not that um, uh, gays, lesbians, uh, transgender people. And we have little groups. We have groups within the company for, for, this, for these people, for people who want to join together um, with like-minded people. And just to kind of bring an awareness to the company that, you know, we're not, that we all come with our different experiences and backgrounds. And there was a company meeting um, not too long ago where a woman complained that, that we're too woke. <laughs> she said, we're too woke. And I, I, I knew right away that she got that from our politics. Right, right. I think, you know, it's not just our country. You know, yeah. I mean, I know we have people we have people here today who are who are not, you know, U.S. citizens. I mean, True. the anger I, I, that I feel like is flowing through the system of of culture right now is really painful. And the defensiveness, I mean, to me, like it looks like it goes straight to defensiveness of like, I'm going to hoard the places that are safe and comfortable for me. Well, that's not what we're supposed to be doing with AA. And so I feel like there's there's a moment at which like we go through periods in our lives where we're not having the best sobriety, right? Like, you know, stick around long enough, <clears throat> you'll have a few shitty years as a sober mm -hmm. person yeah, and be like, I've been an asshole all year. And okay, I sort of feel like AA as a whole needs to kind of like ex extremely good point, like about politics has always been really angry, but the, I, I feel like the world where it, and I feel like this again goes to, we're not just talking about what's going on in the rooms. We're talking about how, what we bring into those rooms, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not a culture. It's not a Petri dish. It's a much more permeable. It's more like a cell. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's permeable and the culture that we're living in permeates those rooms. And so, this conversation, which I, I don't know that we would have had it 10 years ago, but I also don't think it would have been hostile. 
I don't think the conversation no, about so either. a group of people saying, please, you know, it's really troublesome to me that I feel like I have to arm myself to go to a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which isn't necessarily true always, but it's true for some groups in some parts of the world, for sure. You know what I mean? Thank you, Jeff. Um, I just feel like the the sort of the walls of of what we're allowed to say and do have we're trying so hard to throw those up. And I'm like, that is the opposite of what we're even as white and fusty as the 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 original authors of this program were they for sure inscribed the only requirement for membership. Mm -hmm. The only requirement. The only. The only. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. like, and in every other form of recovery, the only requirement is that you want to get something better for yourself. You want to live differently. You know, I can be a little sharp tongued about that and be like, I wanted to be less of a jerk, which is true. I continue to want to be less of a jerk, but to make that possible for all kinds of people was always their intent. I don't think they imagined what that could look like or what the world would look like now. We can't get narrower. Like, I mean, that's the opposite of... Yes. Even if we're going to go back to like, this is gospel, I can tell you right now, I believe Bill and Bob would have wanted us to be opening every door. I mean, yes. look at like the later writings of Bill. Yeah. He was very aware of how limited that mm -hmm. early literature was. So I can tell you that I believe even if we're going to go back to the hard and fast, this is what the literature says. I believe those people would have wanted us to become more accommodating, more capacious, more willing, more, more open to diversity. Um, and the idea that we're still like, it's 2023, folks. Diversity, women, people of color, I don't know how to tell you, but we outnumber you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like that I'm gonna read make Tim's comment, if you don't mind. Yeah. He he's written quite a bit here. And he he yeah. does he he always has something good to say. Anyway, everyone must accept that unwelcome touching is unacceptable. In Chattanooga suburban club, a newcomer black woman asked a black man with years of sobriety if he would sponsor her. He said no. It would all it would all be about, and he grabbed her ass. Damn. Um, with the white woman that led the meeting objected, none of the other meeting participants would speak out against the touching. None. That is so wrong. The white woman will never come back again. Such wrong bad behavior. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Same thing. I had a, a man ask a woman out that I had finally gotten to a, a meeting. Uh -huh. Finally, she'd come back years, and the first meeting, some guy was. 13 stepping her wow. and, and she never came back. She didn't feel comfortable uh, doing that. Yeah. And then when I, when I called them on it, which I really believe to call someone when you see something, yeah, you should, he got really angry with me and didn't understand what I was saying and didn't even see how it was wrong. And right. so, you know, we're not criticizing. I feel like I'm educating exactly. and just like, yeah. In my home group, when I first suggested that perhaps not closing with the Lord's prayer would be all inclusive, then the Christians felt that I was taking away their Christian rights, but I wasn't. I was just trying to increase the tent so that other people right. that didn't say Christian prayers could also feel comfortable. Right, and we right, were right. a home group. And if a man came into our group on a Saturday, didn't know it was a women's meeting and sat in the circle, right. we would just, you know, he would look around and sometimes they would leave. And sometimes someone would follow him out and say, look, you know, it's a women's meeting, but if you really need a meeting, right. Come, right. you're, you know, it's about a suffering alcoholic right. you know the, the whole pronoun and the whole othering and the whole camps and the whole triggering this triggers me well then you trigger me i mean we can all sit in a circle right. and, and have a you know a circular and firing like, squad and what yes exactly gonna do. we're here to get think, sober that's i mean like and i think that that speaks to um i feel like the uh the the point that like what we see that to the to the quote of um when i walk into the halls i don't see men women blacks whites browns i only only want to see alcoholics that still suffer i set my mind to every time i enter the room that is that is admirable to to a point like to an extent although i will tell you that friends of color of mine will say like if you say to me that you don't see my mm -hmm. color you've just denied my entire life in this planet you know like the the fact is that like not everybody feels comfortable having their identity or wants to have their 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 primary identity and experience in the world sort of erased in, in some i'm not saying that is erasing or that that is the intention but some people do feel that that erases their experience i i also think there are very few of us who genuinely can drop our cultural baggage to have a conversation with a person who is 
different from ourselves, right? Like there are very few times that we are not, we're all code switching, you know, to, to an extent, like the, what I'll say in a meeting of women is different than what I'll say in a, in a mixed meeting is different than what I'll say in a, in a meeting in the South is different than what I'll say in the meeting in the North. Like, I mean, it has nothing to do with one or the other group is good or bad. It has everything to do with the extent to which are we really able to drop that cultural identification fully? I'm not. Like, I am really not. Um, and and I'm sorry. Like, I mean, I really feel like I've walked into a men's meeting. The, the meeting I got sober in was a men's meeting. Nobody noticed. Like, nobody told me. And I'm grateful. I was so freaking loony when I got there that they were just like, let's just let her sit quietly in the corner and nobody bother her, which I'm grateful for because yeah. it, was a, it was a place to not be drunk for an hour. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, at that point, they really were able to just be like, whatever it is, it's so scowly, leave it alone in the corner where it's not bothering anyone. And I'm grateful for that. But like, I don't know that we are fully able to universalize or that we always should, you know, I mean, again, to the friend who was like, I didn't think anything of my sexist, you know, hostile joke, because I didn't see that there was a woman in the room. And I'm like, and therefore you made that woman feel really uncomfortable in the same way that I feel like I think awareness, you know, woke is such a fucking, excuse me, such a, such a tagline right now. Like an awareness that you're in a world with other people who don't share your experience. Mm -hmm. Isn't the worst thing. No. Do we have to tiptoe? I don't tiptoe very well. Do I want to be mindful of other people's experience and their right to have it? Yeah, I do. Like, do I want to be worrying about padding the corners of what I say so that people don't get mad? Not really. Do I want to be equally? Do I want to be careful so that I don't trigger anyone? That's not my job either. You know what I mean? Like, but can I be conscious of people are coming from really different backgrounds? I don't have to push my sort of like everybody make me comfortable on everybody else. You know what I mean? I don't I don't need everybody to make me comfortable, but I would like to feel safe in a meeting where I can try and get sober. You know, like, can I get the singularity of purpose? You know, that would be amazing. If AA can become these things in this way and get rid of the religious present teachings, come back anyway, because we for sure have meetings where it is safe to be who you are, where it is not religious in nature. Whoever you are, please come back because we're all in there mouthing off and messing it up, but we're trying and it's working for some of us. And I'm, I'm glad to see you here, whoever you are. Um, so I feel like that's the thing is that the door has to be open. And I know I, I, there are people in this room who open doors for me. Like I know we are not alone in this and yeah. Are we going to bicker? Okay. Glad to see you. Person. Um, you know, I know that we're going to bicker. I know that we're not going to agree about everything. I had a great argument once with, um, who was, it was Roger a about the use of the word spirit. Roger a is one of my, like, I admire him more than I can say. And we had this marvelous panel where he and I argued about the word spirit for like 20 minutes. Oh wow! I learned something. He learned something. It was a great mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. I think we moved forward from that. You know what I yeah. mean? And that was early on in the, in the beyond belief world. So I feel and like that's, that's why it's not... so important to have these conversations. Right. So right. important. And I feel like AA is the one place where I want to feel everyone is included and everyone has a seat. Right. And look at the similarities and not the differences. Right, right, and right. I'm not exactly. threatened. I'm not threatened by the differences. Right. Yeah. Like I, you know, to say that you know, we look at the similarities and not the differences. I think that can go to one extreme where somebody's like, "There is no race, no gender, no class in no, AA." Agreed. And I'm like, no, ah, agreed. but there is. You know, since you're the same dude who's telling me none of these things are the are the thing, but you won't let me leave without cornering me. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not because we're both alcoholics. I'm pretty sure it's because I'm a woman. You know what I mean? So like you know, be being aware of we're there for a singularity of purpose, right? Like we're there for a reason. 13 stepping, like, you know, I mean, people, you know, people I've married people in AA, you know, and, and mm -hmm. unmarried them just as quickly and well, not as quickly, but like, you know, like you can, it's not like it's against the rules, but right. going in with the assumption that like, I mean, tell you the <laughs> truth. If somebody grabbed my ass in a meeting, they would have, it would have yeah. been <laughs> well, like that's an extreme, but it's not rare. No, it's not rare. And I am I'm glad to hear people talking about the fact that that's not OK. Like it's not it's not even remotely OK. But I think about that, like if that's a black woman who comes into the meeting and she sees the only other black individual there asks for a sponsor because that's a shared identity. Right. group, And then he like flips it on her and makes her feel even more isolated. Oh, my God. Like that's just, you know, the diversity. It's not about representation. 
it's not numeric representation. If we have a woman and a person of color and a queer person in every meeting, then we're like diverse. It's about whoever walks in that room, they get to be there to get sober. They are not there to go to coffee necessarily. They are not there to, you know, be your baby mama. They're just there to get sober. Like let them be there. So do you think AA is getting more into every group is autonomous? And so different groups that are only comfortable within their own group or forming their own groups instead of as a whole becoming more expanded in a bigger tent. Do you feel like we're getting in little tribal groups now more so because of the atmosphere? Yeah, I think modern I day? do. You know, I think that, you know, the question of, you know, and that again is a cultural question is like in times of massive social transition, we do see this, like just historically, we see, you know, this really truly tribal behavior beginning to take place, right? Like that's true across recorded history. Like we know that. I do feel like AA can work against that. Like I'm not, I'm not only going to women's meetings, partly because a lot of women walk into their first AA meeting just because they walk into whatever AA meeting. And I want there to be one woman there. Like I want there to be a woman there. Even that if that makes me the spiky crabby lady in the corner. Okay. That one woman walks in and is like, thanks for being no bullshit. Like mm -hmm. maybe she says she stays sober another 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, that's the least I can do. And so like, while I might be more comfortable in women's meetings, women have their own crap. You know, we all know that. Like, so do men. Men's meetings, like those tribal worlds yeah. also can become a bubble. Like yeah. they can become a bubble. I can so tell I, you, Mario, from experience, I went to a men's group for 25 years, my first 25 years in the program, exclusively a male group. And, um, you know, in the beginning, when I was uh, younger, in my 20s, it was it was a good thing because there were a lot of other guys of my age and we were yeah. able to bond in a way that I hadn't before with other guys. Mm -hmm. But um, after 25 years, <laughs> I really needed to have a little bit more <laughs> diversity in the, my recovery community. And right. so for me, it was it was beneficial to have women in a meeting. It was beneficial to hear that point of view. It was beneficial for me to have a conversation with a trans person and learn that her experience in Missouri isn't the same as mine, you know? <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, and I think um, that yeah. Point, those, those identity groups very much have their place and very much have their value, have a lot of value. And I've gone to lots and lots of different kinds of meetings, found all of them to be like, balancing between all their assets and some of the drawbacks. Like, you know, I mean, all meetings were just in there trying to be a, a group of people trying to get sober, a group of drunks, right? Like, and so the meetings that, um, the meetings that I feel, it, it's not that I would want to ever eliminate an identity group meeting. It's that I feel like what we can probably as individuals stand to do um, they, women always got the car. I hate that. I hate, I hate to hear these comments, but that's it's, so I, funny. <laughs> but I really, but I like, that is super funny. And I, again, with Monty, I'm like, let them go to how to meetings, how they like, man, like, you know, let people live how they're going to live and let live. Mm -hmm. I feel like Absolutely. that one got lost. Right. It like totally that one got, got lost. lost. Totally. It just but hurts like, me that that happens that a man yeah. says he was glad when women came to meetings because they were emotional comfort and always got the coffee. I can't freaking believe it. I was not at that meeting. Oh. I'm the least comforting person I've ever met. And <laughs> I, just, I am never going to get your fucking coffee. I mean, but, but I will be in there saying any women in here need to chat afterwards who don't want to necessarily get, you know, a ride home from the nice gentleman. When someone but, says something like that publicly in a room full of people, well, damn, we don't know. What are they, what are they thinking? Well, we don't know if they're that's defaulting happened. to the universal, right? I like, well, they, how is it that they can say it without consequence. Jesus. How is it any different than somebody says the only way to get sober is to find a higher power and get on your True. knees and pray? A very good point. How is a that any different? Point. And, you know, I felt excluded from my home group when I brought up the whole Lord's Prayer thing. Yeah. And that's when I found the secular path. And that exclusion from that group that I thought were my ride or die buddies. Yeah. Like I thought no matter they were different, but I knew I could call them in the middle of the night and they would help me stay sober. When right. I saw that, that, that the level of aggression towards my ideas was so strong, I felt so awfully excluded. And I don't want anyone else that would come to my meeting to feel that feeling of exclusion. Right. No matter what pronoun they are, no matter what sex they are, no matter what color they are, I feel like AA's principle is about inclusion and acceptance yes. and tolerance and love. And it's just a bag of bones with skin trying to stay sane and sober. Right. Exactly. Period. Exactly. And I feel like I, I feel like if we could, 
um, I, I don't know. I do feel like the conversations where we kind of pinpoint, okay, this kind of situation isn't helpful. This kind of comment is really reflective of culture. But in the meetings, I feel like we do have a task ahead of us to just go in and be like, can I drop my own preconceptions and assumptions at the door? Like, can so the guy who says women are emotional comfort and they make the coffee. Can that guy and I sit in a meeting for a minute and I drop my crap about men and he drops his crap about women and we just are like, are we both drunks or what? Like, are we both just drunks? Oh, yes, we're trying to live better. That's so it. just being in the workforce for a long time. So I remember uh, Anita Hill. And after that came out that we had a lot of training in, in, in corporations about sexual harassment and what it was and 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 that and that just got more and more involved over the time mm -hmm. and then the me too movement came mm -hmm. came came about and again in the workplace we became more sensitive and and we got educated and we got trained and it, and it's a yearly annual thing that we right. that we have to ingrain in ourselves that there's a certain behavior that is totally unacceptable right and but we do have conversations too we have conversations about this stuff because it's important that doesn't happen in aa that doesn't happen in smart recovery that doesn't happen right because we talk about it like it's an outside issue we yeah. say yeah, oh well, that, why would we have diversity or gender training it's but an outside you know, issue it's right, it's right. not an outside issue at work because right. it would affect our, it would affect what we do at work. It affects our relationships. It I does. mean, this is the thing is like, you know, I, that conversation Mary's talking about the guy who hired me to give that talk on Hazelden, the guy yeah. who asked me to do it was like, agreed that the zoom, the zoom, the zoom safety is really valuable. I really feel like, and I, I up to Dale's comment about the same thing too, mm -hmm. like about the zoom camera off really is fundamentally helpful. I like being able to see people because I'm a super visual person, but mm -hmm. I also, um, I also really appreciate that you can sit quietly and truly anonymously yeah, in no meetings problem. and take in what you need and leave the rest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I go into a room and I'm there to be of service and I'm trying to talk and some jackass decides to text me that he wants to go out with me. I'm like, okay, thanks to the guy from Alberta who just decided to ask me out while I'm giving a keynote. You know what I mean? Like, wow. where are you people? But also where am I? Cause I am also bringing my garbage everywhere I go. And it is not my task to fix you. It is my task to fix me, right? Like, and so if I go plant myself in meetings and try to do better next time, I'm still doing my job. You know what I mean? Am I doing it perfectly? No, we're not going to have, you know, politic trainings in here. We are going to no. need to, though, have these conversations where we're not all going to agree. We're not all going to like what's being said. We're not all going to like what we hear. I don't always like to have my racism pointed out, but goddamn, I'm willing. Yeah. You know, I want somebody to call me on that shit because I'm in a world with other people. Yeah. And I don't need to bring my bullshit any further than yep. here. You know what I mean? Can we drop it here and keep moving? That'd be a great thing. Wow. Uh, yeah, I have seen I have seen some conversation around race um, within AA uh, yeah. that in, in my own uh, area here in Missouri. It was kind of a weird thing. Thing. It was a sad thing actually. It was uh, interesting to watch. But what happened is um, there was a uh, costume party, mm -hmm. and at a uh, convention and a bunch of white guys decided to dress up like uh, black guys and really stereotypical garb and so forth. And anyway, um, it, the black people in the place were offended and they pointed this out and the people uh, that were wearing these costumes accused them of not having a sense of humor. Right. So we had a big conversation about this at the area assembly. And so there were people in different parts of the state who were still incredulous that, that they wouldn't even listen. They wouldn't even listen. They weren't even willing to listen that these people were hurt. That's what right. killed me about it. Right. I mean, right. you don't understand. I mean, why don't you even try to understand that? Why, why would you just dismiss it as those people not having a sense of humor? What is wrong? I don't right. understand that. I don't get it, but at I least they wanna... had a conversation. You know, well, I'm glad they had a conversation, but like the, the, the myopia and the kind of the defensiveness. And I think, you know, this is, this is sort of the trouble. I kind of want to acknowledge the comment that like there are there, there are plenty of men who are respectful and plenty of women who are sexist. At no point did anyone contest that. At right. no point did anyone claim otherwise. At no point has anyone suggested all men or all women or I mean, no one has suggested anything like that. But the fact is we are numerically a minority in AA because AA is not a safe space for women. Fact. 
So like, since that's what we're talking about, and I like men fine, trust me. Um, I, I, I have nothing against men as a class or a group, but I do find it tiresome that when I'm going into a meeting to work on my sobriety and to make sobriety available for other alcoholics, that I have to deal with gender bullshit, mine, yours, and everybody else's. That's what we're talking about. That's all. Yep. yep. And the fact that, that women are there, I want to respond to the comment also, there are plenty of men that are respectful and there are plenty of women that are sexist and mean towards men. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And why is it that when women get together and they talk about men in meetings, there's so much blowback just to have this conversation. It turns into a what about ism. Well, I know you are, but what am I? That that's not what we're doing. Uh, we're just having a conversation. Yep, yeah. exactly. And I think the outreach to Monty's point here about the outreach, you know, that I think comes into, there's not a lot of outreach to any group. I think partly because how do we, you know, that the attraction, not promotion. So how do we do outreach? as a group, you know what I mean? Like, how do we, that has always been an issue with the traditions. I feel like we're also not reaching out very much into the queer community. We're not reaching out very much into any of the, the communities because I don't think we have the apparatus. And I think that's a conversation that we need to have. I think we really need to figure out what is our apparatus for making sobriety in whatever form we find it, recovery in whatever form we find it, however we define it, however we live it out. How do we make the fact available like i'll go on facebook and be like look folks being drunk was really shitty for me like i was not good at it and i'm really a jerk when i'm drinking so i'm gonna go ahead and like continue to not do that anybody need to check in <laughs> dale exactly right like you know every time some guy punches my drywall i'm like wow why aren't women running the world but like whatever so like this is the thing is that our stereotypes come from our reactivity Right. Like they come from our fear that we're going to lose something or not get yeah. something we want. I all Absolutely. I want at this point is some meetings where women can feel pretty comfortable walking in and trust that they're going to be able to speak honestly and safely and walk out and get to their cars. Yeah. That and would be a great start. I understand the historical perspective, too, because it really wasn't that long ago when uh, black people could not even go to an AA meeting with white people. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, not that's, 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 within, that's within the living memory. Of yes. many many people, absolutely, and we can say the same the same with women. It wasn't that long ago when women couldn't be married and have their own credit card, right? Absolutely, right, right. you know. I mean, the, historically, when you, when you put it in that perspective, oh, please, Steve, you, you can just see please where me. we're, you know, that it's not surprising. I guess that we would still be having these. I guess it's sad to me. It, it does sadden me, to be honest with you, that this is an issue. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. what can you, but, it, but, you know, if, if I, if all I did was put my head in the sand, that's no good either. Right. Yeah. Well, you haven't, as far as secularity has gone, you haven't put your head in the sand at all. No, I haven't. No, so I haven't. Been a, you know, I, like I have a had life. some nice conversations with women about this and on the other episodes, especially with harassment issues, um, which I always found interesting. And I like reading uh, recovery literature written by women just to get the understanding of what it's like, I guess, <laughs> you know, yeah. the different the different challenges, um, mainly of just not feeling safe in the world. Yeah. Yep. I would just love so. if every person that came to an AA meeting felt included and uh, accepted. Yeah. Yep. And welcome. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And, and if we perhaps thing, were, they could hear the one yeah. thing that kept them sober that day. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. And they didn't have to go in and deal with all the the preconceptions and the pedantry and the you know patronization that yeah. comes from identity groups who think they have the answer. And they understand why other people are the way they are. None of us knows why anybody else is the way they are. Nobody can see inside anybody else's head. And I get really, really tired of the assumption that um, somebody else, because of their, you know, whatever, qualifications, can speak to what it's like to be in my body, in my world, in my life. I can't speak to anybody else's experience. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying. I think it would be wise if we all <clears throat> checked our arrogance a little bit, including um, those who can say to other people like you, you think about why you're upset by my comment. No, you think about why you're upset by mine, friend. Yeah. Let's start there. 
Well, Mario, thank you again. Thank you so much for doing this on such short notice. It, it was a huge, huge help for me personally. <laughs> so thank you. And it was a wonderful experience to see you and have you here and to speak with you. I've always loved everything that you've done, everything you've written, everything that you've said. It's just, I'm a huge Thanks. fan. So thank you so Good much question. for being here. Ditto, so ditto, ditto. Yeah, Good thank you, you so much. Day. Okay, yeah, so fun. now I'm going to switch gears to do our little outro music. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed this. We'll be back again next week with another live stream. I don't know what we'll be talking about, but we'll figure no, it we'll out. No, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Bye-bye.